So it has come to this, another session on indirect discourse and infinitives. And today we're going to stick with just the present tense for our main verb and look at what that does with the tenses of our infinitives. We'll next look at one that does a past tense main verb and then we'll look at a future tense main verb and see what crazy that introduces. So when we were last looking at this, we had just a bunch of different infinitives I'd shown you how to do the active, the passive, the present, the perfect, the future, look at deponent verbs, some irregular verbs. We've seen all these infinitives. So now let's look at some very, very short sentences that do some context for these uh, indirect discourse sort of constructions. So if we have a main verb like skio, present tense, active, indicative, everything normal, I know. We want to go into indirect discourse about what it is we know, or what is I know, really. We have our te, hawk, and bekise. Simple sentence, skio, te, hawk, bekise. Skio is present tense, let's actually label that. This is our present. We see our, accus our, um, our accusative, that's going to be our subject in indirect discourse, and then we see our infinitive. And our infinitive is what sort? Perfect, good, it is a perfect active infinitive. We have a little active there. So since this is present tense, this gets to stay like a perfect tense. So it translates as I know that, remember we have to add the word that, Latin doesn't have that in there. I know that you, and now since this is perfect active, we just need a past tense sort of translation. I know that you did this. Straightforward. I know that you did this. Because this is present tense, this gets to stay the perfect tense that it is. So let's change this up just a little bit. Uh, and actually just change this one word. If we were to change that to fuckery, we would have, I know that you do this. And that's because fuckery is a present active infinitive. We have present tense main verb, so the present tense infinitive gets to stay as the present tense. I know that you do this. You know, that, that you study, that you reread your lines each night, that you practice your forms. If we were to change this one more time, let's change it to... essay. All right. So what tense is that facturum essay, that facturum that you are? It's future. So since our main verb is present tense, our infinitive gets to stay the tense that it actually is. I know that you will do this. Pretty straightforward. Let's try it with a, another sort of uh, set up, a different sort of verb for our main verb. If we were to have credimus, nos, winkere. Very, very short sentence here. Creda nos winkere. Our main verb is credimus. And it is present tense. We have our accusative, that's our subject of indirect discourse, and we have our infinitive, winkere, and that is also a present active infinitive. So to translate this, it comes out as we believe that we win. We believe that we win. It may not always be true, but we believe it. If we were to change winkere, change out just this one form, and we were now to make it kise. Well, with that I S S E on this perfect stem, then we know that this is a perfect infinitive, a perfect active one. 
So we would say, we believe that we won. Maybe the refs disagreed. Maybe they made a bad call. Maybe, maybe you know, the opposing team stormed the field like they did the first football game, apparently. We believe that we won. Whatever anyone else might think. So one, of course, is past tense because perfect was past tense, and it gets to stay past tense because our main verb was present tense. Um, one other construction, of course, we can do with this is if we had that Victoros essay. All right, Victoros with that UR, of course, is a future active infinitive. One thing that we didn't really uh, touch on in previous forms and previous uh, sessions of this was that this ending, this OS on the end of this, reflects the number and gender of whatever accusative uh, subject was for this. So, no, it's plural, so we need a plural sort of ending. So, no UM or AM sort of endings, just a, a plural sort of ending. And since it's a collective sort of group, Romans would always default to masculine. So, we have that with Turos. We've seen this number of times in Caesar. We've had Daturos and uh, Persuasos, all sorts of forms like that. In our translation, since this is present tense, this gets to stay future tense. We believe that we will win. We're very confident. Um, I've heard Latin groups always do this as a cheer instead of the like, I, I believe, I believe that we will win, I believe that we will win, sort of cheer. Um, they've always done that on you. Credi. I credi manas, no, so todos se. Whatever way you want to do that. Let us. Uh, look at a slightly more complex uh, sentence here. Sorry, just looking for an example. Um, so let's go back there. Caesar thinks, present tense, thinks that he, reflexive, um, accused of pronoun, going back to our Caesar, Caesar thinks that he, um, let's go with something that could possibly be passive, that he, well, I wouldn't say was made a god, but that would actually use a very odd verb of Theo. Um, but we'll, we'll do it um, a little incorrectly and put a factum. Essay. All right, we have that present tense main verb that he taught, and since this is present tense, everything else gets to operate like normal sort of uh, tenses. We have our accusative uh, subject, and we have our infinitive factum essay, which this time is perfect passive as opposed to active. And so we have our good buddy Caesar thinks that he was made a god. Actually, Caesar's not the one. I believe it's Aspasian whose dying words are low. I feel I am becoming a god, which is just pretentious enough there. So we have the was made to show that it's perfect tense, which is a past tense, passive voice, and that it gets to stay that tense because our main verb is present tense. So that's just a quick overview of what happens when you've got indirect discourse with a present tense main verb. Thank you for watching. Bye.